we've looked at the basic idea behind how transmission works. Now we're going to prepare some samples that we're going to use over in the lab to actually collect some data in transmission mode. And the first ones we're going to look at are powdered samples. For a powdered sample, we're going to need to take a amount of the sample and blend it into some potassium bromide powder. So our potassium bromide powder is here. I'm going to take just a small amount of that with my scoop. I'm going to make a little bit of pile in the middle. That's about all I need. And then for sample, I need very, very little. And here I'm going to use this sugar in the raw. I, I want my mix to be just a few percent of it to actually be sample. So I'll just put a few crystals in there like that. And that's enough. And then I'm going to take my mortar and pestle and just grind it all up like this until I have just a fine powder. That's what I'm looking for is a fine powder. Okay, This has two results. First, it blends the sample so that we get a consistent homogeneous pellet when we make it. And it brings this particle size down smaller so that when we go to make our pellet, we're good. So you can see now I've got something that looks almost like dust. It's been ground down. Now there are tools that specialize in this, something called a wiggle bug that actually sits there and shakes the sample with a little ball in it. We'll grind it up even more finely, but this is quite adequate for what I want to show. Then I'm going to take the pellet press parts and I'm going to construct the lower part of my pellet. Now this is the overall pellet press. These are the pieces that I'm going to be using. There is a lower anvil and this has a cup shape on it, which is going to fit onto the pressure unit of this uh, mini press. Then there is a retaining ring. When the crystal is made or when the pellet is made, it's going to be immobilized in that small circle. And then there's the anvil, the part that actually comes down, or the hammer, so to speak, that will come down and press it. And you notice there's a gap in here. That gap is where the pressure is going to be applied through. So we'll take it back apart now so you can see, again, the three pieces. So I'm going to put the small ring back on. And you notice that leaves me with a cup here. I'm now going to take my powder and I'm going to insert some. And one of the first concerns or mistakes that people make when they're making these pellets is the use of way too much powder. If you use too much of this powder, your crystal's going to come out way too thick. And then the L factor in Beer's Law, Epsilon LC, is going to be too big and your absorption is going to go off scale. You're not going to be able to see it. So if you look now, I just have a little thin layer of the powder on the bottom. Whether that's enough or too much, we'll find out when we get to the lab. But first, let's go ahead and make the pellet. So then I'm going to capture it in there with my hammer on top. So now my unit is assembled and ready for insertion. I'll bring the press over. This is what's called a mini press. We uh, commercially sell these. You just slide the sample on and the cup portion of that will line itself up so that it can't move off of the lower portion of the press. I'm going to rotate it so that we can see it a little better in the camera. You can see right here there is a gauge that goes up to two tons. And that gauge is what's going to tell me how much pressure I've applied. The first thing I will do is bring down the retaining portion, which now establishes firm contact so the thing is the, the whole pellet press assembly is held in place. And then I will rotate my pellet press, applying the pressure. You can see the pressure gauge going up. I've now got a ton of pressure, a ton and a half. And that's probably enough, is right around a ton and a half. At this point, the gap is still there. My sample is located at the base of that anvil. So now we will release the pressure and have a look at the pellet. So I'll pull this off, pull the whole assembly out from under. Okay, let's take that out of the way. Okay. And now I disassemble, and it's made to just be pulled apart by hand. And yeah, that came out pretty good. I'll remove the bottom anvil from it carefully. 
And that leaves me now with the thin little crystal inside the sample. You can see it inside that retaining ring. So this is going to be my sample that I'm going to be using. Now I will do exactly the same steps, only using a clean mortar and pestle and another injection of KBR and just make a pure KBR pellet in the other mount because I will need the pure KBR in order to run a background. So I will use this as a reference and then here's my sample to run to find out what the unknown is. Now obviously we know it's going in that it's sugar, but we'll see what we get when we get over to the spectrometer with this crystal. So that's the process of making a pellet. The key points, don't over concentrate the powder. Add just a little bit of your sample. It's always easy if you run it and you see that you don't have enough sample, add a little more sample to it to, uh, to take the crystal out, pop it out, and make another sample, grind it up again and, and add some more sample to it. But if you add too much, your absorption is going to be too strong. That's usually, the, the problem having too little usually doesn't happen. It's usually that people make it either too thick by using too much powder, putting it in there, and then you get a really thick one. And I, I could demonstrate that. If you do that, the, we can make another one here using the second one very quickly. We will just add a lot more powder to it this time. So now I'm adding a, a tremendous amount of the powder. Scrape a little bit more. And I'll show you what it looks like when you're done. There will be a certain opacity to it. There seems to be a tendency for people wanting to do this, make it really thick. And we'll put the press together. Okay, and then we'll do the exact same thing. Put this on there, line it up. I'm going to apply the two tons of pressure from the back now. We'll turn it around. You don't need to see that a second time. But as I apply that pressure now, and relieve it, we'll have a look and see what that pellet will look like. So we'll take this off, remove this, remove the pellet press, pull apart the device, and you can see it pretty cleanly. If you look at it on the camera, you can see, or, or in the video there, you can see very much that one is almost opaque compared to this one, which is much clearer this one looks more like a window. That one looks too opaque and is going to be way too thick when I get it over to the spectrometer for this. So that's not a good pellet and all I would do now is just punch it out and remake it again. I would just start over. So two things as I said. Don't use too much sample. Don't use too much powder when you're making your pellet. Try it first. If you use too little the little pellet that you make will be fragile. It'll pop out of there when you open it up. Just add a little bit more and do it again. So good luck in making your samples. We're going to take this sample. We're going to go over to the lab and we're going to run it. And then I'm going to pop this one out. I'm going to make it with just pure KBR powder so that I have my background.